At 24 years old, Nicosia is the youngest candidate to contest in the upcoming elections. National Solidarity Party's Secretary General Go Ming Singh introduced her as part of the party's fourth and final batch of new candidates as he unveiled the NSP's five member Marine Parade team. Ms. Nicosia has been the subject of much attention after news broke that she will be going up against PAP's Ms. Tim Pei Ling. During the media conference, she responds to criticisms of her political immaturity and intentions to stand in Marine Parade. Nico, what sort of grassroots experience or, you know, experience with policy making that you, you've had? Okay, uh, with regards to your question, um, I wouldn't say that I have had grassroots experience per se, but I've been very involved in the community uh, ever since I was in secondary school. I used to volunteer regularly with a community service group, and I would be, I was a camp counsellor to delinquent secondary school students. And on top of that, I also made regular house-to-house -house visits to deliver foodstuffs to the needy. Just to sidetrack, um, this was actually when I had my first political awakening, because when I visited a house, I was surprised to see that there was an old lady who was, uh, she had a roof over her head but she didn't even have enough money to buy a meal. And that angered me because, yes, we have provided food for her for that one day, but what is going to happen to her the rest of the days? And that was when I realised that you need policies to go down to the root of the matter and you cannot rely on organisations to do the job for you. Okay, um, moving on. So after that, I, w I went to junior college and, you know, um, I was always very actively involved in CCAs. I was in the secondary school band. Um, after that, I continued with my band activities in junior college. When I moved on to university, I decided to take on a more nurturing role. So what I did was um, I continued doing camp counselling because I believe that's the best way to integrate students into the community. Uh, on top of that, I also headed an online publication in NUS that was independent of any stakeholders. So this was called the Campus Observer. I fronted it as the managing editor. And from there, I explored issues that were pertinent to the ground in NUS. Statements, statements were also uh, brought up with regards to uh, Tin Pei Ling's suitability as a candidate because of her age and her ability to connect with the ground with residents. Um, so in that sense, I think people will be asking the same question of you. Many people have questioned whether uh, youth is a liability in politics. I'd like to disagree. I feel that in politics, you need a representation of different types of voices in Parliament. You need to ensure that there's a diverse and well-rounded group of individuals who are coming together to speak on behalf of national interests. So with that, I would say that, you know, I want to stand up here as a candidate and I want to represent the, voice, the voices of young Singaporeans who feel that they want to stake in this country, who want to have their voice heard, but who have been apathetic all this while because they feel powerless to make any real change. And I want to change that. I want to engage young Singaporeans in politics and policy making. Why at Marine Parade? Because pitting Ms. Kim Pei, pitting Ms. Nicole with uh, Ms. Kim Pei Ling is going to draw away attention from more important well, issues. Well, it's not our intention, right? Um, Marine Parade, we have the party as a whole, as a higher level, have been always interested in Marine Parade for strategic reasons. The NSP has been walking the ground in McPherson for the past two years, and or maybe longer yeah, than that. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, two years. <laughs> yes, or maybe longer than that, but that was before the I joined the NSP. <laughs> so they already have a very intimate understanding of the ground, and it would be a shame if we were to let this GRC go uncontested the way it has for the past 20 years. For me personally, Marine Parade holds a lot of sentimental value because I spent most of my education there in CHIJ, in TKSS, followed by BJC. So I feel very, there's a strong draw to um, the environment, to the, to the GRC itself, and I hope to offer my candidacy to the residents to show that I'm familiar with their concerns and their needs. But on your Twitter, mm -hmm. there's like vulgarities uh, on it, and people have already started to scrutinize and put it on the forums. Mm -hmm. So what is your take on this? Okay, uh, okay. okay, I will address this question. <laughs> <laughs> the Twitter was meant as a, a personal account and uh, I'm quite surprised to see that people are actually uh, so keen to go and dig up that they will dig up a post that is really very, very old because I've seen that particular tweet for myself 
and it has something to do with congested traffic. Now, honestly, <laughs> if the traffic has been like at a standstill for an hour and you are running late for a meeting, wouldn't you be swearing too? <laughs> That's all I can say. Yes, I'm from a middle class family. Uh, okay, I stay in a five room HDB flat. So uh, if that's down to earth enough, um, I eat at a coffee shop every day because that's the cheapest thing that I can afford. <laughs> I mean, once in a while, I do go out with my friends, we eat at nicer places. But, you know, I think with regards to being on the ground, I understand how the average Singaporean feels because I myself, I feel that I'm an average Singaporean. I'm not elite. I do not have, you know, a scholar. I, I, I do not have a scholarship background. I was never like, um, I never read university overseas. So um, I think with regards to the concept of the everyday Singaporean, I understand how it feels. I understand how it feels to stand in a crowded train. I understand how it feels to, you know, be stuck in congested traffic, you know, refer to my tweet. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so um, I think, yeah, I do empathise. I do empathise. Uh, I think that politics in general is quite a tricky game, especially for the opposition. Uh, but one thing I'm very thankful for, and uh, I'm very thankful for, and I think that, you know, it's important to have is a strong support system. So I have friends, I have families, I have um, all the people who are rallying behind me online. I I think one thing I'm thankful for is that I've been raised in a culture that has always taught me to push the boundaries and to question the status quo. So I think um, part of it led to me uh, questioning the current state of policies, you know. Yes, they benefit Singaporeans as a whole, but what about those who fall through the cracks? Is there enough being done for them? And I think, um, yeah, I have very supportive parents, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, you guys, <laughs> really recycling your questions. <laughs> Uh, okay, I think that's a very tricky question to ask a 24-year-old. I'm only 24. I cannot say that I've had a regret that is so life-threatening that it has stopped me in my tracks and made me unable to move forward. So yes, I would say that I have had many setbacks in life, perhaps a few minor regrets here and there, but I think as a whole, every triumph, every regret, every tear that you've shed, every path that you've chosen to take, has developed you, or rather developed me as a person. Okay, uh, my biggest strength, I would say, is that uh, I'm very driven, and I'm very committed, and I'm very energetic. So whenever I'm committed to a cause, um, I see it through, and I have a very strong sense of justice. So if I feel that there are people who are being treated unfairly, if I feel that there has been an unfair distribution of resources, um, I will want to be in there to step in and to be the doer, you know, to change things instead of standing by the sidelines and complaining. But with regards to my weakness, you know, that could also translate to my weakness because I can get very emotional about that. So um, I don't think, um, yeah, la, you know, I need to control that. La. But, and, and that's it. Um, I'm also a procrastinator sometimes. So um, for those of you on my Facebook page, if I haven't replied to your comment, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I will do it very soon. So you must be sick of Timberling questions by now. But what do you think is your biggest edge? Uh, I do not wish to compare myself to her. I do not wish to focus on issues that are of trivial importance. And I think that it's important that we focus on the pressing national issues at hand that will impact how voters make their decision in the coming elections.